Hey guys, it's Liam here again, and in this video I'm going to be going back to 16-bit territory, showing you a console that was wedged in between the 16-bit wars of the era. Now, let me tell you a little bit about that first. Now, during the early 90s, there was a bit of a console war between the two main rivals, the superpowers of its day, which was Sega, with their Sega Mega Drive, also known as the Sega Genesis in North America, and, of course, the extremely famous... Super Nintendo, which is called the Super Nintendo regardless of where you are, or the Super Famicom maybe in Japan. Now this is, yes, you can see the PAL Super Nintendo, the North American version looked radically different to this, but I'll cover that in a different video. Now back in the early 90s though, there was a major 16-bit console war fought between these two great consoles. Although this was released first, the Sega Mega Drive did come first in the late 80s, and for its time it competed with the the Nintendo itself, the NES. So to get back on its feet, Nintendo released this, their own 16-bit console. And this is who the war is remembered to be fought between, these two 16-bit consoles. Now, the console that I'm going to talk about today, however, was unfortunately for it sandwiched between those two great consoles, and it never got any real recognition because Back up for the day, everyone remembers the Super Nintendo and the Sega Mega Drive. Now, some people will still remember this one, but this is what this video will be about. The Turbo Graphics 16. The lesser known 16-bit console of its day. And it's radically different to both of its competitors, the Super Nintendo and the Sega Mega Drive. So, I will show you this now. Okay, okay guys, so this is the Turbo Graphics 16. Graphics spelt with an X because I suppose it sounds a bit cooler that way. And here we go. So I'll show you exactly how it came packaged. Get all this styrofoam crap out of the way. Okay, so it's still got its cellophane on. Has been used for the cellophane itself. I like to keep it on there when I'm not using it. The out. Okay, so there's the console itself, and here, neatly locked away in this little bag, is its controller. There we go. Now you probably notice that in the whole box, there's no AC adapter or connection to your TV, whether it be RF or AV connection, and you'd be absolutely right. That's because, in order to do that, it comes with a separate box as well, which is this. Now, bearing in mind I did say that I'm going to be doing a separate accessories video, this isn't really like it says on here, accessories. These aren't really what I would call accessories, these are what you need to get the actual thing working. AC adapter, RF, etc. So I'll show you that now. Okay, now I've just quickly moved the TurboGrafx-16 out the way uh, just so I can show you the accessories box. Again, if you can call it accessories. I know I wouldn't. Right. Here's your manual. If you don't know how to set a video game console up, don't need those. Okay. Here's your RF connection if you want it to be connected by RF. This is a much better idea. Here's your AV connection. So you can get it connected via AV. Again, it's still got neatly packed away. Now, as you can see from this, I'm not gonna bother taking it out of the bag because it is only an AC adapter. It's a two pin, which means it's for North America, but it can still be used easily. All you need to do is get yourself a step down adapter which you can get pretty cheap these days. The one that I got off eBay uh, still works now, even though I got it a few years ago. Uh, it cost about £7, something like that, which I suppose is about $10 or so if you're in America. Now, these are extra connections that you can use to connect to your TV, depending on the type of TV that you use. I would never use something like that. That's where you have to literally screw it to your TV. So just some extras that you don't really need, but that's it. There isn't too much to say about these. They're just your connections to your TV and your AV connection. 
So let's go moving on to the console itself so I can show you that. Here we go. Okay guys, so this here is the TurboGrafx-16 console itself. It's a really nice looking console, although a bit unusual, but I like it. It's nice and rounded. Now if we take a better look first of all at the controller. It's a little bit like an NES controller. Just a couple of buttons here. Start and select, although they've named this one Run. Now I'm not quite sure why, if anyone knows then please tell me, but in some regions this particular console is also known as the PC Engine. I'm not entirely sure why. One little bit of trivia though I will say about this console is that it has the only, as far as I'm aware, console version of Street Fighter 1. We all know Street Fighter 2, but Street Fighter 1 was actually released on the TurboGrafx-16 under a slightly different name called Fighting Street. Anyone who's played it will know it's absolute shit compared to Street Fighter 2, which was, for its day, awesome. But yeah, the <laughs> Fighting Street was absolutely crap. Now, one thing that you will notice here, at the front of the console, there is only one controller port. Just one controller port. The reason for that is because you actually have to buy an accessory just to be able to um, plug in more than one controller. The accessory will be shown in my accessories video, but yeah, pretty pointless, I think, really. When you look at consoles like the Nintendo 64, and others that gave you the option of four controllers in one. Whereas what does this one do? This one tells you you've got to have an accessory just to be able to play more than one controller in one go. Now down here is where the games will go. Really unusual games for its day even now. But I'll show you the games in just one moment. Now if we look at the back of the console. You'll notice there isn't really anything to see on the back. It just says... Turbo graphics again, just in case you forget which console you're playing. And on the front, obviously at the side there, is where you would get uh, some of your inputs. Now, it makes a horrible snapping noise when I uh, unsnap it to show you the back of the console itself. So I'm just going to quickly pause this video just to, to snap it off so that you don't hear the snap on the video. Bear with me. Okay. Right. Now, uh, the reason I paused the video there for just a moment was because... This part here actually does come off, but it makes a horrible snapping noise when you do it, so I just didn't want that to go on the video. The reason this comes off is for this. This input here is where you can connect an accessory to the TurboGrafx-16, which is the CD drive, which came with the games like Fighting Street. So yes, it did have its own CD add-on. Very reminiscent to the Mega Drive itself, or the Genesis with its Mega CD or Sega CD as you call it. Now I'm going to show you now the games themselves because as you can see here unlike the Mega Drive and Super Nintendo you would never get a cartridge in there. You wouldn't get a cartridge in there, not in there. Nowhere around on this console can you get a cartridge in there. But let's have a look at the games themselves. Okay guys, so here are some of the games that I own for the TurboGrafx-16. There relatively weren't that many when compared to you know, the Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo, its competitors. There weren't very many games released for the TurboGrafx-16. But there are a few exclusives uh, that weren't released on the Sega Mega Drive or the Super Nintendo. But some of the best games available on the TurboGrafx-16 are actually available now on the Wii Virtual Console. So you can download some of the games. But this is the odd thing with the TurboGrafx-16. If you have a look at that. It's just an extremely thin card. It's a little bit like the original Master System. When that, used, that did have the option of playing certain games via a card. This one's called China Warrior. Bit of a pants game, but there you go. Just some instructions on there, just in case you don't know. So, you know. Don't bend, drop it, or subject it to shock. So don't go boo, or it'll get shocked. Okay, right. But that's the game itself. 
or one of the games. They did come in just normal CD cases. Some of my CD cases though are in a bit of a naff condition. But inside the CD case, it, yes it was a bit like a, just a normal CD-ROM case. And they go inside these little pouches just to keep them safe. And what you would do with the game itself, you would literally slide it in here. Push it in a little bit more just to make it nice and tight. Turn it on. And you've got the game playing. Okay guys, so that was a brief review and look at, at the TurboGrafx-16. A lesser well-known console of its day, stuck in between the bit wars of the 16-bit Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. Now it sold okay, it sold around 10 million units and it was finally discontinued in 1995. But again, it's a bit like the Atari Jaguar. It was a good console, it was just released at the wrong time I suppose you could say. And it suffered because of that. But if you can get your hands on one of these, definitely do. I've said that with a lot of consoles, but I love my retro consoles. And I will always say get your hands on one of them. Although if there is a really shitty one out there in a review, I will tell you it's not you know, worth the paper <laughs> that the money's printed on to buy it. But the TurboGrafx-16 is not one of those. Or the PC engine as it's known in some areas. So if you can get yourself a TurboGrafx-16, definitely do. You won't regret it. They're not too hard to find. Plus the games are really unusual as well. I find CD based games quite boring to review because CDs are CD. Cartridges are better because they come in different shapes and sizes. And like we saw at the TurboGrafx-16, they're on cards. So you can't get more unusual than that. Okay, so there we go. So if you like this video, please you know comment on the video, rate the video and subscribe. My subscribers seem to be going up daily, which is fantastic. And thanks for all your support so far. I will be starting a different section on this channel as well pretty soon. Um, basically reviewing some old games as well. I'll probably start with some more of the unusual games. Maybe my favourite port like NES, something like that. But I don't quite know yet. But if you've got any ideas, by all means let me know. Um, leave a comment and I will certainly consider it. But I'll probably start a separate playlist as well rather than just consoles, games as well. And that's it. I'm changing the subject there. So there we go. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care now and see you next time.